Warning, this video may contain graphic content such as sexual scenes, violence, gore, boobies, and the rest of the fun stuff. Unfortunately, YouTube won't allow that, so we'll try what we can. Please be over 18 to view this video, and don't say we didn't warn you. Endlessly searching for an original Alright guys, welcome back to Butterfly Affection. Now I do want to thank the fan that did introduce me to this game and sent it to me. Unfortunately, I don't have their name anymore. I've been sitting on a couple of these games for a while. Now if you guys do want to request a game, you can of course leave it in the comment section. You can contact me on Twitter and on Discord and, you know, on Patreon and other places and let me know. Um, between this and Song of Say, I think I picked the right games for this month. So we're going to be skipping through this as fast as possible because we've already seen all this. We're going right back to the choice we had made. Let's see if it's different. And I, I hate a glitch. One day, Agia was playing with the computer. Or was she? She caught my attention and showed me a page on a mail order site. Maybe she wants to buy something? While well, considering whether to actually purchase it, I go ahead and add it to the cart for her. Oh, she's on Amazon! Then Agiha starts browsing related items, looking at a multitude of different pages. She stops at another item and gives me the same look as before. After repeating this cycle a few times, several pieces of clothing and fabric pile up on the site's cart. Oh, she is a woman at least. She seems satisfied with this and lets me use the chair and the mouse. The extra fabric all matches up with the clothing. If Agiha were to receive all this, she may start wearing more clothes. Or maybe she just likes looking at the pictures? Well, she's a woman, so of course she's gonna like clothes. I do have to clothe her properly anyway, and Agiha's growing much more slowly now. The total price is not cheap at all, but it's still a reasonable amount. Since Agiha eats only a little, she can barely... She she's barely increased my expenses and even helps with the cooking it's gonna cost a pretty penny but it's within my budget so I decided to finish placing the order after a few days everything I ordered arrives I unpack it all and give it to Agiha I wonder how she will how well she can wear it with no modifications but as I'm thinking about it Agiha brings out a sewing kit I can't sew myself but I never threw it out. She must have found it collecting dust on the shelf. I didn't expect her to be able to sew at all. Actually, I should learn how to sew myself. Despite that, Agia opens the sewing kit and starts working. It looks like she won't need any help from me. Agia starts slowly, working with the tools, but she handles them deftly with no issue. Since it seems she will be here for a while, I'll leave her to her own devices for now. Agiha's recent behavior is unsettling, so this time away is a breath of fresh air. Since rejecting contact with her will affect her mood, I'm glad she now has something to keep her interest. Now I'm completely certain about it, Agiha's intelligence is at least on the level of a human. She understands clothing, can use a computer, can plan in advance, can learn to sew, which we should be questioning that, and has the skill and knowledge to work properly. She's shown greater intelligence than a human child. She's obviously intelligent enough. So she continued so she continued ability to communicate feels unnatural. Really quick, um, does anyone know if the creator of this has made any other games? I'd really like to play them. I don't know if she can't communicate or refuses to. She should be able to at least convey something. She's too busy sewing for me to try at the moment, so I'll try again after she's done. Even if she doesn't, still doesn't respond, I'd like to keep trying. The next day I left my room, and I saw Agia wearing a nude clothes. Looks like she finished her modifications. Even though she was working skillfully before, I was still surprised to see how well it turned out. Her inhuman parts are hidden enough that she can pass as a girl. It's a bit conspicuous, but there are fashions like that out there. She looks mostly human now. She looks adorable. She might be able to go outside like this. I'm impressed. So 
suddenly Agia points to the entrance. It seems she really intends to go outside dressed like this. I figured she would want to leave the house at some point, but I wasn't expecting it to be so soon. Did she figure out that I have nothing planned for today? Eventually, I decided to go out with Agiha for a while. I probably didn't have to worry about her running off or scaring people. I can be optimistic about this trip with Agiha. I shouldn't get too worked up, but I doubt that will stop soon. <clears throat> We're only going to see the neighborhood, so don't make a scene. Agia's only response is a knowing smile. Oh, I'm sorry. We're only going to the neighborhood, so don't make a scene. Only a few days ago, she kept her intelligence hidden. But she still won't even nod or shake her head in reply. I'll interpret her smile as a yes for now. But I need something more clear. Either way, it should be fine for now. I'm worried, but I open the front door and leave Agiha. I leave with Agiha. You stay here, Agiha. I'm going for a walk without you. As soon as we left the house, she took my arm and started walking. Since it's her first time outside since we met, and leaning on me makes her four-legged walking look more natural, I have no reason to stop her this time. She's wearing a cute dress, and her hu inhuman parts are hidden from view. My sense of reason and morality fights it, but I'm seeing her as a girl now. My heart rate increases from this unusual tension. Luckily, it's early, and there are a few people around, and nobody sees Agiha show any suspicion. After walking a bit, Agiha and I stop at a nearby park and sit on a bench. I'll let Agiha see the view, and then head back home. Not much time has passed since we left, but between Agiha's actions and my nervousness, taking her outside, my heart is pounding. I turn toward Agiha to check how she's doing, and see her reaching towards me, bringing my face closer. I don't know what Agiha is doing, so I let her continue. Her face is very close, and I only realize what she's doing a bit too late. I raise my arm to stop her, but we're out in public. Just shoving her away would draw attention. No one's gonna see the tentacle? Thinking about what to do, I stop moving. I was still for just a small moment, but that moment was long enough for her lips to meet mine. You're a good girl, Agiha. You, <laughs> you're a planning little girl. Agiha didn't try anything after that. When I suggested going home and stood up, she followed me obediently. I don't know if it's an, Im an imitation born a... Okay, so I'm going to take a moment because I'm going to giggle like an immature child. <laughs> I read that and because um, my brain... Pro uh, reads things too fast so I don't always process them which is why you see me take a break every so often I swear to god I thought that said I don't know if it's an imitation boner and I just stared at that for a second and I went nope I'm not reading that right I'm gonna leave this one in this blooper stays in I don't know if it's an imitation <laughs> <laughs> imitation born of curiosity or if she has been or if she has a concept of love but this behavior makes it clear that she sees me as a man. I am a man! Oh god, the internet's ruined me. The femininity I saw in Agiha was intentional. I'm still upset over what happened, and it's clouding my mind. I wonder if this was Agiha's plan all along. Maybe as I understood more about her, I can come to answer. I need to get my thoughts together. Agiha co has... Agiha's cooking has improved. Da -na -na -na! In taste and presentation, it surpasses my own. It sometimes tastes odd, though I was never a great cook myself, but I don't get it. She may be adding some kind of special ingredient. Why does that remind me of a certain anime? A word without dirty words or something? Oh, I love that anime. Or she could be trying to make food unique to her. Maybe she's learning how to cook more than just what she watched me make. She could be watching cooking shows. I thought Agiha had no sense of taste, but I was wrong. Maybe she did, but it never showed on her face. Whether she's co whether her cooking skills has increased without a sense of taste, I have no idea. But I shouldn't I shouldn't think about it too hard. This is a trivial matter compared to her expressive kinship. 
I don't need to worry about that while I'm eating, though. I think a Giha, I thank a Giha for the meal and keep eating. I don't know if she understood, but she softly smiles in response. As I figure out how to accept Agiha's new behavior, her constant kinship troubles me. I pretend to be hard at work and reduce my contact with her. If I let her cuddle with me and get affectionate, she might try something like what she did in the park again. Agiha seems quite dissatisfied with the distance I'm keeping between us. When I avoid her, a bored frown appears on her face. Oh, okay, she is a woman. Give her attention and give her love, that's all we want. Guys, we just want some cuddles and some love and some video games and some pretty jewelry and some clothes. Look, we're not that hard to understand. Give us shiny things and we're happy. When I see it, the guilt stabs at my heart. It makes me want to turn, return to her side, but I decide this is a safer option and force myself to look away. I will say I adore the artwork in this. It feels like a Giha can communicate without using language, so there should be other ways to try it. I read some materials that might help with that. Pet training, children's education, communication with foreign cultures. I even read texts on psychology and mental disorders. I feel myself getting impatient with a Giha, but she doesn't need to know that. Even if I try various kinds of basic yes or no questions, she still gives no indication that she understands. Welcome to dealing with women. I do like to remind everyone I'm female. Maybe it's not that she has no, she has nothing to say, but instead that she feels she doesn't feel like telling me everything. She's a woman. Every married man watching this video is like, yep. Or a guy in a long relationship is like, yep. Agatha, oh, Agiha is neither human nor animal. A unique existence. It's possible that her mental structure doesn't even allow for language. She has been dicking with you this entire time. But since I'm an amateur in this subject and not willing to use extreme methods, I'll have to settle for that answer. Go call the SCP. This is a longer episode for just one day. What should I do now? Should I accept Agiha's new behavior? She's changed so much in such a short time. She hasn't made a move on me since. But if she does, Will she just stop at just a kiss? I don't know if I can control Agiha's behavior. I haven't tried restraining her, kicking her out, or getting violent to stop her. And I don't know how she would react if I tried. I'm afraid that I might not even be able to. No, what I fear isn't the risk of the unknown. It's possible that Agiha will get angry and cause trouble. But I'm not worried about that. I just don't want Agiha to hate me. So we're going to do another day. As always, we're going to do two days. Normally, when it's time to sleep, Agia quietly goes to her bed on her own. But tonight, she came into my room. Thinking about her recent excessive kinship, I warily face her. She gives no indication that she notices me worry and sits next to me on the bed with no hesitation. Before I can say anything, Agia wraps a tentacle around my neck and slowly pulls me toward her. I have seen enough Henta to know... I'm gonna get what the girl usually gets. Thinking she was trying to, she was trying the same thing as before. I grab Akia by the shoulder and stop her. Even if she doesn't understand me, I tell her firmly to stop doing these things. When I say this, Akia's face quickly shifts expression. Anger, sadness, surprise. I'm not sure what I see on her face now. I don't know how she really feels. After a few seconds, Agiha uh, narrows her eyes. I still can't tell what she's thinking. Run, 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 run. You're about to get, what is it, Sundere? Uh, what's the other one? You're about to get stabbed in the dick. You're Lorena Bobbitt. Suddenly, I feel a tight pain in my neck where her tentacles is touching me. I touch the part where I felt it, but there's no blood and the pain quickly recedes. It didn't hurt very much, but it hurt enough that I was sure I didn't imagine it. In my puzzled confusion, I look at her and see her smiling gently. She pulls me toward her just like before. You are so screwed. I put my hand on her shoulder to push her away, but I no longer have any power in my limbs. Just putting my hand on Agia's shoulder can't stop her. She kisses me like before. 
But unlike before, she doesn't stop at a light kiss. She keeps going until I have to take several breaths through my nose. She lightly pushes against me, and my weak body falls to the bed, too powerless to resist. She lays across my front as she keeps kissing me, and her long tongue slithers between my lips. Multiple tentacle-like multiple tentacle -like tongues coil around my tongue. Can we stop with the T's and the S's for a while? Run across my teeth. Lick my inner cheek and slowly invade my throat. I, ow. I don't do that when you have a sore throat. That's a really bad idea. I keep trying to push Agiho away, but my arms have no strength. I can't resist her in any way. She steals my breath away slowly and steadily, and all I can do is accept this passionate kiss beyond what any human could ever do. Actually, despite my deep paralysis, my body has become extremely sensitive. Agiha's warmth, her rough tongues, her shallow breaths, the wet sound of her saliva, they echo through my mind, destroying my will to resist. How much time has passed? It may have been two, three, or even ten minutes. Although I don't know how long my consciousness faded away, eventually Agiha slowly releases my lips. As I wondered what she would do next, Agiha stared at me for a while. She smiled, kissed me gently, and left the room. The paralysis slowly wore off. I regained full control of my body and managed to sit up. After confirming that my body is back to normal, I clutch my head in terror. I thought that she might be potentially dangerous before, but since Agea had the phys physique of a girl, I was confident I could fight her off if I needed to. She's definitely far more dangerous than I thought. But honestly, this doesn't change anything. I just have to be more careful in the future. I can see- Nope. No. We did one meme. One meme a video. That's for Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Although I don't know when she'll try something again, I should try not to upset her for now. I tremble with fear, thinking of that deep, sweet kiss etched into my mind. The thoughts- Maybe I should accept her, suddenly returns. This dangerous, mysterious thought somehow only grows stronger. Rather than fearing the odd being, no the odd being known as Agiha, I'm afraid of myself wanting her even more. When Agiha stung me, I lost all movement in my body. Her venom is strong and fast-acting, but luckily temporary. It leaves no scar or noticeable after-effects on my health. Oh, well, I guess. But also seemed to increase my sensitivity when she kissed me. Although the venom only affected me for a short time, what Agia did remains clear in my mind when I see her. I can't decide on whether to go from here. I'm organizing my thoughts and trying to see how I can move forward. But I don't know what I should do now. What is it that I really truly want? I want to save! Alright guys, so we'll see you next time for Butterfly Affection. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. If you guys want to support the channel, you can check out our merch shop. You can check us out um, on Patreon or Subscribestar. And, of course, you can see us uncensored on other sites, Hub and Vids. Unfortunately, I can't say the names here, but I want to thank you all for joining me and supporting the channel. If you guys are from those other channels, just look me up on YouTube. I am Purity Sin as all, and also Chaotic Gaming, or Chaotic Go Gaming. And I'll see you guys next time.